it has never been a better time to build a high performance, low budget gaming PC. And today we're gonna show you just how competitive you can be with a thousand dollars. Okay, you wanna know what the secret to, uh, the secret to ultimate thermal performance is? You take the stock thermal paste and you take some aftermarket thermal paste and then you combine that shit just like this. And it'll give you what, what happens is the thermal pastes mix together and then they give you exponential cooling performance to the power of, to the power of 10 of both thermal pastes. It like adds them together. So we're going to try and build the fastest PC we can for under a thousand dollars, obviously. Now the, um, there are some good sales on Alder Lake right now, which is the whole point of this video, right? Okay. So the parts that we're going to use today is this Z790M ITX. Uh, the reason why we're using this one is because it's cheap as hell and it overclocks very well. Now I would not put an i9 on this thing. So you can see, dude, you can literally see there's no VRM heat sinks on this thing. So, but it works very well in an H1 case, which is what we're going to use because the H1 CPU fan blows directly on the motherboard. So it's, it's kind of like this motherboard is a perfect pairing for the H1, but I, I wouldn't use this in a, a normal ITX case without some serious airflow over the V. Like it will, like it'll throttle a stock i9, no problem, no problem, right? And then I have to go grab an H1 actually. And then the Vipers here, I've already de-skinned them, right? The Vipers, I kept the box just in case, but this is a 7200 kit. I'll put an affiliate link down below for these. Now, these, the, the sticks are good, but the heat sinks suck ass, which I, oh, again, I, I posted this on Twitter and apparently the kit that I got was like a one off. So here's, here's the, here, dude, here's the fucked up thing. Why is it every memory kit that I buy from Newegg or Amazon is always fucked? And then the manufacturer contacts me and they're always like, that must have been a mistake. How is it? How does that happen every time? How? I don't think so. So that. I mean, I could talk about that all day with the uh, why getting sample. So getting if you get a sample from a manufacturer, they make sure that there's no defects, right? When you, dude, you know how much shit I fucking buy from Amazon and Newegg that comes defective or comes like with manufacturing defects and shit? It's out of control, dude. Memory sticks, some, like you guys saw the Gale ones, right? In particular, were really fucking bad. Anyway, these were equally as bad. I showed you guys in the Discord. The the foam was all off. The, 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 the memory stick was crooked. It, it wasn't even touching half of the pads, like the, the ICs, right? So anyway. I de-skinned them, but if you do get these ones because they're cheap, right? I'll put an affiliate link for them, but if you do get these ones, they do work in the H1 case, even with the shitty heat sinks because the air blows down on them. I've tested, I tested, I made sure to test that first. So this build that we're doing today is specific to you requiring to use the H1 case because every, so you're basically saving a whole bunch of money on all of these ghetto ass parts because the H1 case has a 140 mil fan that blows air down over the whole thing. And that's the only reason why this whole thing works, literally. So uh, if, you, if you go and you assemble this whole thing in another case, it might error, it might throttle. I have no guarantees. This is just literally an H1 build only, okay? So the build, starting off, is uh, NZXT H1 from Best Buy. I don't have an affiliate link for this, so just go, just go get it. 
$250. It's just, it's so fucking good. I don't know if this is still on sale, but when they are, I stock up on them because it's just insane. We got 12, seven, this one, this one that I'm using today is a, uh, oh, it's a KF. Yeah, 12,700 KF. This, this is more for like the people that whine on Twitter that are like, Jufus never does videos for poor people. It's like, here you go. I'm doing one, okay? I'm not gonna make any money off it. Nobody's gonna click on affiliate links. Whereas all the bros in the chat right now, they're all asking about 14th gen. And they're all asking about $800 motherboards. That's my audience, man. The dude, they'll pay thousands of dollars for 5% more. Thousands. I don't think this motherboard is worth $220 though. It was definitely worth 170 when I got it. 220. The other problem is that's still the cheapest two dim that you can get ITX wise. I have, if you wait and get it on sale, this board has been on sale for 170 before. Uh, Azrock. And it, the, the memory overclock on this thing is insane. It's just the VRM is absolute dog shit. You have to pair it with an H1. 222. So the reason why we're picking 7,200 sticks, because the price and those are guaranteed to work with XMP with the 12,700K on this motherboard. You can, you can go higher, but if you go 74, if you go 7,400 or up, the chances of it failing on XMP is quite high. So I, I, this, this, I'm assuming if you're doing this build, you're too poor to afford a consult. So I'm going to make the build in such a way that it just works. 34. Oh, here we go. These are the best ones. 120. 34, 42. Okay. Forget the Vipers. So I haven't tested these ones, but team group has been by far the best when it comes to the heat sink, even though it's a dog shit heat sink. At least it makes contacts with, at least it makes contact with the fucking memory ICs, okay? None of the other brands have figured that shit out. That's all we need, right? Yeah. So right now we're at 850 bucks is what it costs you without the graphics card. For a graphics card for this type of build, what what do poor people use? Shut the god, dude. That's like the most fucking derogatory thing I've ever said in my entire life. It's sad. It's I don't mean that as it sounds though. You guys know how I mean it. Jesus, so bad, dude. It's so bad. What do those poor people use? No, dude. There is this thing comes with a power supply, dude. That's what I'm saying. Intel Arc, that's an interesting idea. I never even thought about that. That's a very, very interesting idea. I have one. We could throw that in this and see what it does. Ah, I don't know if I want to, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, that's fucking cheap, dude. A778 gig for 290? I, so... I don't... I don't know if it's good or not, though. That's the problem. Like, I don't... Like, I, like... I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to... Tell the guy viewing the video that it just works and then tell him to buy this shit. If it's not going to just work. That's the problem. Even AMD, well, I don't know. I haven't tested it. But when I when this launched and I tested it, it was so fucking bad that it made AMD look stable. That's how bad this was. I don't know if it's still like that or not. $300. Just get one of these ones. Whoa, why does this guy have so many old, old mining cards? Yeah. Refurbished? Yeah. Oh, it's a Zotac USA. There you go. Fuck yeah. 
Yeah, this Zotac USA seems to be the GOAT. 310 for a 2080 Ti. 90-day warranty and all that shit. This is directly from Zotac, too. So that would be the play. 2080 Ti is too strong, man. A 2080 Ti completely fucking annihilates a 3060 Ti. 2080 Ti, same price, 310. So yeah, we're 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 stuck with the $1,200 build no matter what. Oops, 310. I wouldn't. I just. I just. There's no point in going any slower than this. Like a 3060 is too slow. Okay. Check how fast it takes to build an H1, dude. I think the 6800 is the best. No, man, I would take a 2080 Ti any day over that shit. Dude, I would take a 2080 Ti over a 6900 XT. Are you kidding? I literally just did that benchmark with uh, Jedi Survivor. A 2080 Ti is like 10 FPS away from a 6900 XT. It's ridiculous, dude. Because Nvidia just works. It's not. It's not. It's not about raw specs. It's about what the fuck just works, man. And especially Turing. Turing works with literally. You can go back to like DX six games, and Turing will work, man. It's just you, you can't. You want to go back and play open GL games like Wolfenstein or some shit? Yeah, the 2080 Ti is going to work. It, it just works, man. You put a 6800 XT in your computer and it runs open GL games at like 10 FPS. It's a fucking dumpster fire. It's an absolute dumpster fire. And what do you think, dude, and if you're if you're in the, if you're in this price bracket, so put yourself in the shoes of a poor of a poor person, right? Imagine you're you're literally trying to build. Let's say let's say you're a single mom, like literally, like legit. You're a single mom, and you're trying to build a, a Christmas present for Timmy. All right, and you give him a fucking AMD graphics card. Just bear with the story here for a second. So. Timmy gets a fucking AMD graphics card. He wants to go and play, let's say, Roblox or something. I'm sure it works fine on Roblox, but whatever. Let's say he play, let's say he tries to play something like that, and the AMD card gives him like errors and stutters and fucking all that shit. And he's just like he he can't compete. He's like pissed off. He's frustrated. Where do you think all the stress goes? Back onto the single mom, dude. What, what do you think she wants? She wants her kid to leave her the fuck alone for five minutes so she can just breathe, okay? AMD graphics cards are not the play for that shit, man. Not in this price bracket. If AMD nerds want to go and buy a whole bunch of money... I just put this in backwards, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. If AMD nerds want to go blow a whole bunch of money to fuck around and find out, go ahead and do that. But when it comes to people that actually just want to play games, man, you can't be doing that shit. No shot. Not when Zotac is offering a 90-day warranty on those on those refurbished ones. Not a chance. The, the problem with hardware nerds is they don't they don't have perspective of what normal people are like, man. It's really weird. Like like I don't know how to describe it. What would you, again, grandma, we got to go back to grandma. What would you do if you were building a PC for grandma? Okay, so this is the build. Let me actually zoom in here. Oh, wait, I got to change my scene over. Yeah, like this. So check this out. So it's, it's, so I need to study the camera here. So you see this big ass fan here, how it like clamps over. So the memory sticks get active cooling and the VRMs do as well when you close it. That's the only reason why this shit works. Except for this cable here. It's the only reason why this build works the way it does is because of that fan. Like this. And then you're done, man. 
Now all of a sudden your entire motherboard and memory sticks get active cooling. See? So it's like... Right? The fan is... Uh, move this plastic out of the way, that would help. The fan is right here and it blows air right on the memory sticks. And now all of a sudden it doesn't matter that the Vipers that you buy or whatever you buy, it doesn't matter all of a sudden that those, that the, the heat sinks aren't even touching. It's still active cooling, right? It's so goaded, dude. It's so goaded. And now you don't have to worry about your VRMs throttling your shit either, right? Dude, that's it. $800. This, this entire fucking thing was 800 US dollars. So before we get into the benchmarks, this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. Now, I'm not going to even bother asking for people that are purchasing PCs in this price bracket to go and become a supporter because they obviously can't afford it, right? But what you can do if you are a budget buyer is just comment down below and thank the people that do support me every month because they basically paid so that I could bring the information to you guys here, the ones that can't afford to support. So just make those guys in the Discord feel good about themselves, nice, warm, fuzzy, by saying thank you in the comment section to the supporters. So for benchmarks for this build, you gotta keep in mind it's a $1,200 build, right? I used a 2080 Ti just for argument's sake. And then so it's probably going to be going towards a kid like Timmy. And then Timmy's probably going to be into esports, right? So let's do like Counter-Strike 2, Overwatch, and Warzone. Okay, so I'm tuning the machine right now as we speak. And um, just from what I was talking about in the stream here with the, the memory sticks being bareback and then with the, uh, the airflow here. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I've been stress testing the sticks for 45 minutes here, right? And the memory temperatures are 47 and 45, right? So this is this is lower temperature than like aftermarket heat sinks on a regular ATX board. So this is what I'm talking about, right? So th this whole setup here works because this big ass fan is blowing all the air onto the board and the sticks. That's why it works so well. You need to be using this H1 for this to work. And then with memory temperatures this low, you can do quite an aggressive overclock on these things. Okay, so let's start off with 1080p. I left all of the uh, advanced settings, just defaults, whatever, right? Uh, let's jump into a game here and check the FPS. Okay, so the defaults for this game are 400 FPS, obviously, and then we're, we're pegging 400 FPS. No problem. With a 2080 Ti, and a 12700K, right? So, there you go. 400 FPS CS2, uh, $1,200 build, yeah. Okay, Overwatch 2, 1080p medium settings I selected, and we're at 550 FPS, 540. So, yep, yeah, you are competing with $1,200 at the highest levels of esports. Highest levels. Okay, so for Warzone here, we're gonna use uh, 1080p. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be playing with a $1,200 PC, you're not gonna be going and buying a 1440p 240 hertz monitor that costs more than the damn PC, right? Um, you're gonna probably gonna be using a 1080p screen, 144 hertz, 240 hertz, you can get those for a couple hundred dollars, right? So this is just more, 1080p is just more realistic for what we're doing today. All right. All right, we just landed here and we're getting about, uh, about 200 average here at 1080p. That sounds about right for this rig. So you're getting 200 FPS in Warzone which is more than most streamers for $1,200. This is how you, this is how you do PCs, boys. This is how you do it. Look at that, solid. No dips either, nothing. Just amazing. Timmy can compete. There you go, boys. 
1200 bucks and you're playing esports at the highest competitive level use all those affiliate links down below if you learned something hit that subscribe button do all that youtube seo stuff like share subscribe comment down below just say thanks to the supporters down below and i'll see you guys in the next one talk to you later